Hi everybody, how are you doing? Hope you're well. I've been watching the Netflix series Sex Education. Uh, really on brand, isn't it, for my channel? And oh my god, it is so good. Brilliant. Some of the best writing for television I've seen in some considerable time. So this video is going to be a review, a synopsis, a uh, fandom of the Netflix show Sex Education. Uh, if you have got Netflix, Go and watch it directly after this video. You will want to as well. Uh, and if you haven't got Netflix, or you don't know somebody who has got Netflix, maybe worth getting the free trial and watching this and then deciding if you want to just watch it forever because <laughs> I, I think it's that good. So very quickly, the synopsis of the show is uh, it follows around a character called Otis and now his mum is a sex therapist as is his dad, but his mum and dad are separated. He's 16, he is doing his A-levels, just started them. He's a virgin, he is uh, sexually awkward, uh, he has absolutely no experience, and that includes with relationships or even talking to girls. But he's listened to his mum and his dad giving, you know, counselling sessions to others. Bit of an interesting uh, dynamic there with confidentiality, but uh, he's heard this over the years, you know, not just in the sessions, you know, outside that talking in general has got a decent sex education from his parents. However, as you might expect, the schools don't really teach sex education very well. And in the first episode, uh, there is a situation where he gives some advice to another student. Uh, I'm, I'll let you watch the show to find out exactly the details of that. But basically he finds out that he's really good at this or he's told by one of the other characters he's really good at it and uh, he sets up a kind of clinic, a business almost, of giving out advice for sex education with his schoolmates. So it's set in a sixth form college and the surrounding kind of small town I think it's in. And I'm not altogether certain when it's set. I, I think it's purposely not set in any particular time period. We've got modern technology, uh, modern ways of speaking, and modern attitudes to LGBTQ, and to grades and teaching and that kind of thing. But also, uh, the fashion is kind of late 70s, early 80s. Uh, the cars are from that time period as well. The decor, the school system, this being a sixth form college. Uh, it's kind of very, very traditional. I know we've still got them, but uh, kind of traditional kind of 70s, 80s kind of view on how you do, do these things. But also the school isn't quintessentially British or English. It's got uh, Americanisms in it. You know, you've got your row of lockers, which you wouldn't usually find at a sixth form college. I actually think all these things are on purpose and are a device to kind of disorientate and with it not being set in any one time period as well. It is to show that the lack of sex education, the lack of comprehensive sex education, is not just based in one school or one time period. It transcends all of this, which is only my opinion. You might have a different view on it. So throughout the series, Otis becomes this kind of sex guru to the other uh, pupils at school. We've got Maeve, who is one of his friends. Now she uh, needs money, so she's kind of running the business side of things. We've got the kids paying um, 20, 30, 40 pounds or whatever much they want to pay for the sex therapy sessions. And they've got a range of complaints and problems. There's Eric, who is Otis's best friend. He is of uh, his family's of African origin, but uh, he's gay. So there's this, that conflict there between his dad and him. His dad's very accepting, but uh, also uh, trying to find ways of getting Eric to fit in. Then there's Adam, who is the headmaster's son, but also the school bully. He's very much uh, alone though in that. He's very much kind of seen as an outsider and the other main character, as far as I can see, is Amy. Uh, and she is kind of part of the cool kids, but she's um, on the fringes of them. She wants to be full-time in the gang, but she's got uh, a friendship with Maeve. And she's only really in that gang to be cool. So this show is groundbreaking in many, many respects. We've got uh, great attitudes to sex and talking about sex. We've got challenges to uh, taboos. Uh, we talk about masturbation, got vaginas, we've got people unable to ejaculate. And we've also got many, many multifaceted female characters, which 
You may be surprised about this, but is very unusual. Often female characters in dramas are one-dimensional. They've got one purpose only, and often that purpose is getting the guy. <laughs> but here we've got Maeve, who is uh, basically supporting herself. Her mum and dad have uh, one's junkie, one's in prison. They don't live with her, so she's 16. She's trying to look after herself. She's trying to get money to look after herself. She's at, uh, eight, doing A-levels, so she doesn't work. She hasn't got a job. So it's really tough for her. There's Amy and her uh, friendship with Maeve, and also her trying to break away or be accepted by the cool kids. But she has her own problems as well, uh, which uh, Otis has to look into. Uh, which brings me actually round to one of the most groundbreaking things you will ever see on British television. Female masturbation. I don't think it's ever been tackled before on any uh, drama mainstream programme before. And that story is so well, well written, in my opinion, because it a kind of gives a nod to what uh, female masturbation seems to be a kind of a massive taboo subject. And uh, it gives a nod to... Um, a lot of women or a lot of people thinking that it's disgusting but the reason why it's in there is so that the character and uh, I know who it is but you'll have to watch the show the character involved has to find out about their own body because the person they're with is um, somebody who wants to please them and they've never had that before so they don't know what they want now the way the show is set up lends itself perfectly to this being the first time that it's been brought up in a drama but you know what um I still think it's brilliant. Another point in the show is the acceptance of all things um, LGBTQ, of all things about consent. Consent is everywhere in this show. It is never ever brought up as a thing that is taught. Everybody accepts that you need consent. And that's what's so brilliant about it. It is a given. So consent is asked for or is obviously got in all sexual situations in the show. There's communication between partners when they are having sex, when there's only a couple of times where you actually see that happening, but uh, whenever it does happen, there is questions asked. Even going as far as a female character asking a male character if she can touch his penis before doing so. You know, it, it is so uh, refreshing to see that. It is not made a big deal of, it is a question, and if there's a no, then it doesn't happen. If there's a yes, then it can happen. For all the young people in the show, uh, LGBTQ plus uh, characters are accepted. There is no challenge to their status. But, of course, the challenges that LGBTQ plus people face are not ignored. You've got uh, Eric and his dad and that relationship there. You've also got a situation later in the series where you've got one of the characters in drag and uh, they get punched for it. Not by somebody in the school, but somebody outside. So the challenges are giving a nod, but they are not made the subject of the show. Also, the way the show tackles um, privilege is interesting because Otis, Otis is white and straight uh, and male, obviously. So um, he's faced with uh, some clients who are lesbians and he doesn't know what to do, what to say. That is acknowledged. It is said that he is his first time giving out any advice about this and he hasn't got any experience of it himself. So he has to go away and do research, which uh, is a different storyline which has hilarious consequences. But it is nod to his privilege that he doesn't know and he has to find out. And you might have noticed here, I haven't even touched on the actual storyline. The storyline is, is actually secondary to this show. It, it's the kind of knitting which holds the whole series together in each episode as well. What I find amazing about this series is the knowledge that you are learning, the things that you are learning you didn't even realise you were learning. You, you are entertained and you are learning stuff at the same time. So many things I'm so glad that they touched on. So they've got a, a female character who is desperately trying to have sex. Um, because she's never had sex before and wants a penis inside her. She just wants to know what it feels like. Although when asked later on, it's because she thinks that everybody else has had sex already. And when she actually does get the opportunity, um, she has vagimis... Vagimis? Vagimis? Vagin... <clears throat> when she does get the opportunity, her vagina doesn't play ball. It doesn't open. Uh, <laughs> which is a common... Complaint. It's a female sexual dysfunction. This video is long enough already, so I'm not going to go on anymore. 
but you should absolutely go and watch this show. Uh, it is on Netflix right now. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to uh, find clips online if, you, if you're not sure. There's, a, there's a, a, an Instagram account which you should follow. They've got memes and little clips. It'd be great. And I might in future do uh, a few more kind of deep dives into this as I watch it again and again, <laughs> as I'm sure I will. Um, it might be quite interesting. If you would like to see that, why not leave that approval in the comments or anything else you want to say about the series. If you like the video, then give it a thumbs up. You can do that just down below. I make videos every single week, which is a great reason to subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.